What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and let's take a look at the newest arrival, an iPhone 10 clone, yeah, another one. This time around, it's nicer than the last ones I've shown you for the very same price. So it seems like everybody is wanting to make an iPhone 10 clone. I think we're up to like 10 already. We've got the Ligu S9, we've got the Boe Notch series, the Ukitel U18, the Doji 5, uh, the Noah N10, the Huawei P20, Redmi Note 5 Pro, the Awo 10, and then there's this one. I just, why is everybody making one? But in any case, I wanna see on a more premium side what an iPhone 10 is like from a different manufacturer, not just Goofone, because every other clone that I've shown you guys was from Goofone. So let's take a look at that. Uh, you know, I feel like I'm gonna be making a lot of these videos just because I really wanna see who gets it the closest, the best to uh, Apple's version. Definitely already feels a little bit more premium. It doesn't come wrapped in that sketchy looking bubble wrap like every other clone does. So definitely a much nicer box. I like that it's not trying to completely copy the Apple experience, only the design on the inside. So, all right, let's turn this camera around and see what this one is like. It's a silver one and bring an iPhone 10 over for reference. All right, so this is the end goal that the company was trying to get to. Let's see how close they got here. And quality control pass, good sign. Should be getting what I paid for. Okay, and uh, here it is. So, pulling that out. Oh, <laughs> little off there, guys. You tried. All right, so let's get this back. Okay, the front, uh, definitely closer to the real deal. So, not sure where they got the white border from. The old iPhone 10 models before it came out looked like that. And uh, I've got the notch, or what looks to be sort of copy of it, but you can see the screen doesn't quite go all the way up there and doesn't go all the way down here. So this is, when it's off, it looks like an iPhone 10. Otherwise, you know, a hard miss here. The border, I guess they got sort of close. They got the SIM card tray up there. So interesting take on the iPhone 10 design, much bigger. Oh, and it's got a headphone jack, cool. So a feature that Apple forgot to put into theirs is on a $120 clone. And on the bottom, you still do get the dual speaker experience with a micro SD slot. So not quite like Apple. Uh, they didn't want to infringe upon the design too much, but believe me, there are designs that are one-to-one. -one. I've got a clone coming in in a couple weeks that's gonna be literally the same thing with the display and everything. So stay tuned for that one. On the back, look at this lens here. Oh man, skinny, dinky, not the same. And I don't, believe that's actually a real camera on the bottom. So uh, surprise, surprise, nobody seems to put an actual dual lens camera on their iPhone 10 clone. We've got some regulatory labels down there, which are quite hideous. And in general, it's just not gonna fool anybody from the design alone. It's taller, uh, just looks lanky in comparison to the real iPhone 10. Anyways, it does have a home button here, which is interesting. So I'm sure that has a touch ID sensor or fingerprint sensor in there. We'll have to test that out here, but okay. Let's power it on. I'm guessing the thinner one is the power button. Yep, and uh, there it goes. So uh, I'm not entirely sure if this is an organic LED display actually, because it seems to blend well with the uh, top bars, but I'm pretty sure it is a LCD here. I've never heard of this brand before this. Believe me, the only reason I bought it is because uh, it was trying to be an iPhone 10 here. Um, let's see if it's worth $120 at least as a standalone phone that somewhat looks like an iPhone 10. I don't like the fact that the power button and volume buttons are on the same side, that bugs me. I don't believe this is glass either. I feel like this is plastic on the back, so don't worry about that shattering. But wow, for the first time ever, I'm actually gonna set up a Android clone instead of it just booting right into the OS. So that's quite interesting. All right, I'll be right back guys. I just wanna see what's inside of here. Kind of interesting packaging, something a little different. Uh, we've got a adapter for different country and a micro USB cable, super cheap. All right, so let's test out this fingerprint sensor on an iPhone 10 design. Let's see if I like this. So fingerprint and pin. All right, so it looks like this is a legitimate sensor at least. In most clones, it's not working. It's literally just a touchpad. So it's good to see one for a change that is actually working. So for $120, it doesn't seem like a bad value already. You've got this fingerprint sensor. You know, it's getting, it's growing on me a little bit. I don't like the fact that the screen doesn't go all the way up to the top and bottom, but 
For an iPhone 10 clone, I guess it's not too bad. All right, I need to get out of safe mode here. If you take a look at the actual top notch, you can see that there is a legitimate camera there. To the right of it is a dud sensor, nothing going on there. And I'm guessing that this is the ambience for the display sensor. But otherwise, a lot of empty space here. That could have been uh, shrunk down. They could have made that look a little bit cooler, but you gotta get that overall iPhone 10 look on this thing. So uh, if they really wanted to go all out, they wouldn't have put this border here. But again, it kind of emphasizes something that wasn't there to begin with. Uh, interesting, very interesting design on this guy. The borders are plastic, so it's not the best build quality, that's for sure. Plastic back, yeah, very plasticky. Let's see the flex on this thing. Ooh, yeah, that flex is quite a bit as it's not glass and metal like the real one. Like, wow, that is pretty cheaply made. And just for giggles, I wanna complete the iPhone 10 experience here with the iPhone 10 launcher. I originally used this on the tiny iPhone. Now I'm gonna see what it's like on an actual pretty bad iPhone 10 clone, if it makes it any better. And that one actually worked pretty well on the tiny one, so hoping it will on this as well. Uh, the display on this thing kind of sucks, actually. It is not bright at all. I'm trying to get the brightness up. Nope, not having it. Uh, the icons are scaled, I think, because the resolution is pretty low. So I'm going to have to see what the actual resolution is. But let's see what it's running. I'm, oh, Android 7.0. So pretty recent. Don't expect any software updates on this thing, though. Highly doubt it will get any. And that didn't go quite as planned. So you can't really remove these buttons. And it stretches the dock into this monstrosity you have to swipe up on it in order to get into the control center and yeah, i guess it does work and yeah the brightness can get adjusted here the volume and no 3d touch to open up any of those but it's kind of interesting i need to make it look a little bit more accurate i can't seem to get into the cover sheet to notification center doesn't work for me but spotlight search does and i would it honestly recommend this skin doesn't look very good so um yeah back to the stock one but good attempt so i found this one definitely works a little bit better on the lock screen here we do have the toggles for the flash which does not seem to work and uh, i've got the home bar there swipe up to go into the home screen so i guess you sort of get the experience there all right let's see how fast this thing is just test what kind of processor it has. I'm not expecting much, but let's see anyways. So Android 7.0, ARM MT6737. I haven't really heard of that one. Let's see what kind of numbers it can get. Okay, I think that explains a couple things to me, why this thing is hanging and lagging. So pretty pitiful of a score. I've seen the other clones with a higher one, um, pretty bad. All right, so 2.83 gigabytes. So it does have three gigabytes of RAM, four core processor at 1.25 gigahertz. The iPhone 10 is 2.4. It's quite a difference there. All right, so that is the Geekbench. Let's get a 3D benchmark going here. And that one failed, so it cannot give you an accurate representation of the GPU, but it does give me some details on the actual device here. So it's running a 32-bit version of Android, which explains why the... Uh, Geekbench score was so low, the processor is really old and cheap. Mali T720 GPU, which is pretty uh, crappy. We do have a 640 by 1280 display. Wow, no wonder, uh, no wonder it's so bad. It does say it has a 13.3 megapixel camera, which I don't know if I believe, but we can go ahead and test that out uh, after I test the speaker. So I wanna see how loud this thing gets, if it does have a true stereo speaker set up down there, so. Oh, actually, not so bad. So that's not so bad compared to the other clones that I've tested out. It doesn't sound as tinny, not so loud, but definitely not the worst I've tested. All right, let's see uh, this dual lens camera. Well, actually, single lens, I might say, how it performs. All right, so let's go ahead and get this quality going here. So it's snowing on and off out here periodically. Doesn't stick, but still kind of cool getting that winter experience in February. So this one's not so bad in comparison to the other clones for sure. I feel like this is actually HD video for once. Uh, not the sharpest, but it does so much better than the other clones. Camera alone, huge benefit here. So $120, you're getting much better value. And uh, motion blur is not as bad. This is fine quality, so picking up some better colors and uh yeah for a moment there i thought this thing did not have a front-facing camera um they hit the button so well in the software 
Okay, not so bad. Aspect ratio is all messed up and funny looking. Um, again, better than the clones that I tested out earlier. You can actually make out the details of my face and the. Yeah, it's a tiny, tiny camera though. I feel like this is like two, three megapixels max, but hey, not bad. Huge improvement over the other ones I've tested. So there are the cameras. I'd say five out of ten in terms of. Uh, from a clone's perspective, quality-wise. All right, and lastly, let's go ahead and tear this thing apart. Just wanna see what's inside, what kind of battery it's got. And obviously it doesn't have any iPhone 10 like tech, but it does have the pentalobe screws on the bottom. They even copied that. Okay, I got it. I have a feeling that the screws have nothing to do with actually unscrewing and taking this phone apart. Yeah, I really don't know what those were there for. But the back is not even plastic. It's literally like a very thick vinyl, which is a first. I've never seen that on a phone before. So inside, up there, there's nothing really interesting. We've got a massive battery, which I did notice. Actually, running these tests and everything has been keeping up in the high digits for a very long time. Um, yeah, nothing too interesting here. One single speaker over here, the other one, nothing in its place. But very clean internals, I'd say, for... A phone like this. All right, guys, there it is. That is the iPhone 10 clone for $120. Better than the last one, yes, I'll give them that, but I think they definitely could have done things a little bit better. The design is just too big in comparison to the real one. It's very, very tall, unusually tall smartphone. There's a lot of wasted space uh, when it comes to the design. Higher quality than a standard clone, but would I still recommend it uh, for $120? No, definitely. You can get something much better and something that's not trying to be something better. It's just content with what it is. But hey, it's an iPhone 10 with a home button, which is very interesting and a headphone jack. Interesting take on the clone all around. Yeah, but anyways, guys, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the Galaxy S9 this weekend. Peace.